lead to the commercialization of sodium ion batteries as soon as the cost of lithium ion batteries will increase again. The cost of lithium has risen from $4,450 per ton in 2012 to $78,032 in 2022. That's an increase of 1,654% in the past decade and a 480% increase in just the past year. Now, what if a new battery costs only about $15.15 per kilowatt hour compared to the $100 $101 per kilowatt hour price of a lithium based battery. This is exactly the exciting battery innovation that CALT has to offer. So, what makes the cost of this groundbreaking battery so low? What other advantages come with it? All this and more in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel, friends. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. Battery technology is moving so fast that sometimes it's hard to keep up. That being said, CATL has set up a large supply chain for the batteries and has entered negotiations with some car makers about the possibilities of sodium ion battery use. Sodium ion technology is ready, cheap, and safe. But can it oust lithium ion? Elon Musk tweeted that the price of lithium has gone to insane levels. So how then does the price of a sodium ion battery compare? The absolute advantage of sodium ion is the low cost. Sodium is 2.3% of the world's crust. It's over 1,000 times more abundant than lithium. From the perspective of raw materials for anodes, the recent price of lithium carbonate is 570,000 per ton, while the price of sodium carbonate is less than $3,000 per ton. This means it is 190 times cheaper than a lithium ion battery. CALT even said that sodium has better conductivity and that the concentration of the electrolyte can be reduced, which also reduces the cost by about 85%. And they're, they're more common, uh, easily found, cheaper. Those are the advantages. The average price of a Tesla 4680 battery pack will be $101 per kilowatt hour in 2022. We can then use this to calculate the new battery costs, which is roughly at $15.15 .15 per kilowatt hour, or nearly seven times less than the 4680 battery. Thus, if you own a Tesla Model 3 standard range with an estimated battery, battery capacity of 50 kilowatt hours, instead of having to pay $5,050 for a revolutionary game changer battery, the cost is really low. But then how far can the sodium ion battery actually go? Its applications in passenger cars have shown that it generally meets the needs of models with a range of up to 248 miles. Through pioneering its AB battery system integration technology, CATL has achieved a mix of sodium ion and lithium ion, allowing them to complement each other and thus increase the energy density of the battery system. This approach approach allows sodium ion batteries to be able to support EV models with a range of up to 310 miles, while the 4680 Model Y has only a 279 mile range. But charging time is what most electric vehicles often care about. So how long would it take to charge a sodium ion battery? CATL's sodium ion cells can charge in 15 minutes to 80% at room temperature. For comparison, with fast charging at a public station, a Model Y from Tesla recharged from 0 to 80% in 32 minutes, which is over two times longer than the sodium ion battery. Now, how well does sodium ion perform in freezing temperatures? Lithium ion batteries can only function optimally at 15 degrees to 35 degrees Celsius, which is why they are problematic in the wintertime. CATL's sodium ion battery will sustain a 90% capacity retention rate at negative 20 degrees Celsius and still has a retention rate of more than 70% at negative 40 degrees Celsius. In winter, the problem of electric vehicles inability to cruise will no longer be apparent. Also, we haven't seen any
anything that says there is a significant degradation at higher temperatures either. Now, how safe are sodium ion batteries actually? The sodium ion battery has similar working principles to the lithium ion battery. Sodium ions also shuttle between the cathode and anode. However, compared to lithium ions, sodium ions have a larger volume as well as higher requirements in terms of structural stability and kinetic properties. This has become a bottleneck for the industrialization of sodium ion batteries. Sodium ion batteries are safer because they are less flammable than lithium ion batteries. Newly developed sodium ion technology uses a naturally fire extinguishing solution that is also impervious to temperature changes and can operate at high voltages. One key to this feature is the ultra thin protective layer that forms on the anode. This ultra thin layer remains stable once formed, providing the long cycle life reported in the research article. Despite making significant breakthroughs, the chemical composition of lithium metal batteries has always posed a lot of challenges. What are they exactly? Now, I understand that sodium ion batteries have a, a lower energy density than lithium ion. The biggest downside is that sodium ion batteries have a lower energy density than lithium ion batteries. This means an EV with a sodium battery that's the same size as a standard lithium ion battery would not be able to travel as far on a single charge. CATL's first generation sodium battery generates 160 watt hours of electricity next to a mainstream lithium battery. Last year, CATL unveiled its first sodium battery prototype and said it's been focusing on developing new technologies for a second generation sodium battery that can generate 200 watt hours per kilogram. In contrast, mainstream lithium ion batteries have 200 to 300 watt hours per kilogram. Although their lower energy density is improving constantly, the first generation of sodium ion batteries is better than lithium ion cells from six or seven years ago. How about real life applications? It makes a difference in the kind of applications in which they're used. The first generation of sodium ion batteries can be used in various transportation electrification scenarios, especially in regions with extremely low temperatures where their outstanding advantages become obvious. Also, it can be flexibly adapted to the application needs of all scenarios in the energy storage field. We now see that various new batteries are being investigated in the lab, but it oftentimes takes them five or even 10 years to reach market. Or will they be released soon. US and uh, China and also a large battery company, CATL, recently announced that uh, they will go on production actually in 2023. Even so, sodium ion batteries will eventually become the mainstream choice. Lithium ion batteries will be most likely used in upmarket vehicles, but for everyday use, we don't need the expensive lithium. This is as much of a revolution as the electric car itself, as we have finally found a cheaper and more viable battery option. When do you think we'll start seeing sodium ion batteries on the market? Electric cars certainly reduce your carbon footprint, but making lithium ion batteries could emit 74% more CO2 or carbon dioxide than conventional cars. What if there was a cheaper, more environmentally friendly battery technology that didn't use any metals? A startup, startup, a startup, Holly Jewel has come up with a new breakthrough type of battery made entirely from good old plastic. We've got a technology that will meet all the criteria of the grid, and on top of that, it's easier to deploy. So why would anyone want to use a plastic battery and how might you use it in real life? Given the intermittent nature of renewable energy, battery storage is a critical link in the renewable power system. Among the many technologies that are emerging in the domain, Boston-based PolyJewel, a spin-off of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has created a battery that uses electrodes made of conductive polymers. PolyJewel? Polymers? Anyway, these are plastic-like, non-metal, organic compounds that function as metals for the purposes of charging and discharging energy in a battery. Polyjewel outlined their approach that we do everything throwing out the rules of existing lithium ion batteries. So, want to know how this battery charging time compares to the 4680 lithium ion battery? 
Polyjewel also claims its polymer battery outperforms lithium ion across the spectrum. With approximately 12,000 charge cycles, this battery outperforms the 4680 battery by 600%. In contrast, a 4680 battery might manage only around 2 to 3,000 charge cycles in its lifetime. Polyjewel batteries are also able to discharge around 1 megawatt of power in 10 seconds compared to the 60 seconds in average lithium ion ion battery needs. The team also suggests a polyjewel can be charged in under 5 minutes, which is 7 times faster than the 4680 battery cells. Because the 4680 batteries would require around 32 minutes or so to reach a level of charge of 80%. Moreover, we all know that 4680 batteries have lifespans of around 25 years, but Polyjewel claims that their technology could nearly double that, with a projected lifespan of 50. Moreover, its lifespan is almost three times longer than GM's Ultium battery. In real-world use, an Ultium battery will last around 150 to 250,000 miles, which is equivalent to 11 to 18 years. But another important area that we need to discuss is, obviously, the expense. How much is this polyjewel battery going to run you? Experts suggest that for batteries to be useful in renewable energy storage, their price needs to be reduced to around $20 US. Polyjewel is not quite at that point yet. The team claims their batteries function at around $65 per kilowatt hour. In contrast, although lithium ion batteries have reduced drastically in price in the last decade, they still average around $132 per kilowatt hour. A polyjewel battery is also one and a half times less expensive than an Ultium battery, which is priced at $100 per kilowatt hour. But what about the manufacturing process for this type of battery? Is it easy and is it safe for the environment? So we start with the periodic table of organic elements. Since they are constructed entirely of polymer, Polyjewel batteries do not contain minerals such as lithium or cobalt, which must be extracted and refined before use. Their water-based manufacturing chemistry can be produced using already commercially available equipment and does not require clean room conditions. To prove the ease of production, the startup has already produced over 10,000 polyjewel batteries using simple roll-to-roll -roll processing based on 10,000 trials that makes a very good battery for the home that meets that criteria. Low cost, uh, safe, and long life factor. Price prediction can reach $30 per kilowatt hour in 2025, but one aspect that many people are interested in is the level of safety because there are many battery fires happening in this day and age. So, how about this battery? Polyjewel batteries can actually deliver the high power peaks over shorter durations without sacrificing. The polyjewel is described as ultra safe, and unlike lithium ion batteries, it will not become warped or disfigured with overuse. Having an inherently safer chemistry allows polyjewel to save on system integration costs, among other things. Polyjewel batteries don't contain flammable solvents, which means no added expenses related to fire mitigation. Safer chemistry also means ease of storage, and polyjewel batteries are currently undergoing Global Safety Certification UL approval, to be allowed indoors and on airplanes. Finally, with high power built into the chemistry, polyjewel's cells can be charged and discharged to extremes without the need for heating or cooling systems. Moreover, according to the company, their batteries are 95% recyclable because it's polymer-based. And they use organic materials instead of bulk metals to form a battery. Using polymers for these types of batteries could create a whole new market for recyclable materials, which could be major. Plastics could be put into the batteries, so at the end of their lives, they're recyclable. Besides the great advantages, this battery has some roadblocks ahead, and 
Now let's talk about them. A polyjoule battery cell under development has an energy density five times smaller than 4680, or about 60 watt hours per kilogram. This means polyjoule would need a battery five times as big to store the same amount of energy, making it not ideal for your phone, laptop, electric vehicles, or other applications where size is an important consideration. Each power string measures 2.2 meters by 0.8 meter by 3.4 meters and weighs 1,590 kilograms. Its nominal voltage is 528 volts, and the voltage range is 158 to 972. The manufacturer ensures continuous operation at temperatures between negative 40 and 50 degrees Celsius with minimal capacity loss. Polyjewel is directing their batteries largely towards static applications, such as air conditioners and heaters, industrial energy storage, and data centers. In particular, they suggest their batteries will be particularly useful in situations where a lot of energy is needed quickly, such as in critical infrastructure and renewable energy management. Today's conventional lithium-ion grid-scale battery storage facilities like Tesla's Powerwall and Powerpack can typically supply electricity to the grid for about 4 hours. They are also optimized for regular daily use. Charge up during the day when the sun is shining or the wind is blowing, then discharge in the late afternoon and early evening when the demand for electricity spikes. They aren't really designed to store electricity for days, weeks, or months. However, Polyjoule's plastic batteries might be able to store energy for longer, at about 20 hours. It's an impressive time. They're also figuring out if the Polyjoule batteries can store seasonal energy to balance the grid. Battery storage is always speculative. The transition from laboratory to commercialization is fraught with danger. However, by the end of the year, Polyjewel will have delivered its first 10 kilowatt hour system, exiting stealth mode and adding commercial viability to its demonstrated technological superiority. Or will it? How do you feel about the plastic battery? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. The problem comes because it's pretty hard to design a lithium-ion battery that lasts a long time. Batteries in current Tesla models are estimated to last for around 200,000 miles or more than 20 years before charge capacity begins to drop by more than 20%. Recently, the company unveiled a design for a new electric vehicle battery that could last up to 100 years before needing to be replaced. So, how does this new battery last so long? Hopefully I'm a good weapon. Anyhow, what are we going to do? How are we going to try to improve Tesla's projects? Like, what's this research partnership? Tesla's Advanced Battery Research Group in Canada, in partnership with Dalhousie University, has released a new paper on a new nickel-based battery that could last 100 years and that couples the high energy density of nickel batteries with the long life cycle of lithium iron phosphate cells. Back in 2016, Tesla established its Tesla Advanced Battery Research in Canada through a partnership with Jeff Don's Battery Lab at Dalhousie University in Halifax, Canada. Don is considered a pioneer in lithium-ion battery cells. He has been working on lithium-ion batteries pretty much since the day they were invented. He is credited with helping to increase the life cycle of the cells, which helped their commercialization. His work now focuses mainly on a potential increase in energy density and durability, while also decreasing the cost. The group has already produced quite a few patents and papers on batteries for Tesla. So, how how does the new price of the battery compare to Tesla's current 4680? The promise of nickel-based battery chemistry is explained in this work. The researchers say that they have optimized production costs so that the new battery costs less than half of Tesla's current 4680 cell. This new technology requires fewer battery cells, aids in the resolution of material shortages, and lowers the cost of an electric vehicle. As we know, each 4680 pack costs $7,400 to produce 
produce, which means we get a cost per kilowatt hour of $104. So the estimated price of the new battery will be around $50 per kilowatt hour. How much money will you save by using this new battery? Tesla battery replacement is much more difficult than replacing the battery of your iPhone or other device, especially in the newer models where replacing the battery can involve more than 140 separate steps. This is almost always done by a professional, especially if the car is still under warranty. A Model 3 battery might cost more than $13,500. The labor cost is anticipated to be in the range of $2,300. Therefore, the total cost of replacing the battery might be around $15,800. We know the Tesla battery is under warranty for eight years or 50,000 miles, so you can save a lot of money because the new battery can last 100 years. It could even be reused in newer models and used several times over. What is the energy density of this battery? In the quest to develop the perfect battery, energy density is key. The paper describes a nickel and manganese based battery chemistry meant to compete with LFP battery cells on longevity while retaining the properties that people like in nickel based batteries, like a higher energy density of about 300 watt hours per kilogram. This is significantly higher than current Tesla batteries. For comparison, the analysis returned 244 watt hours per kilogram of energy density for an almost new Model Y 4680 battery cell, compared to 269 watt hours per kilogram for the ubiquitous Panasonic 2170 cells that Tesla uses in its long range vehicles here in the US. Less density means a bigger battery pack is required to go a given distance. Higher density batteries take up less space in a car and let you drive farther. Speaking of farther, how far is the range of the new battery? With some quick math, we can put the Model Y's 4680 battery battery's capacity at around 66 kilowatt hours, and its range rating is at 279 miles. You'll be surprised then when I talk about the range of the new battery. The researchers say that it will have a range of 500 miles. It's equivalent to the range of the Tesla Semi with 900 kilowatt hours of battery. This is quite the monumental breakthrough in the battery industry. So will this battery actually have a lifespan of 100 years? whether the lifetime of the cells will be dramatically improved. NMC cells, particularly those balanced and charged to 3.8 volts, show better columbic efficiency, less capacity fade, and higher energy density compared to LFP cells and are projected to yield lifetimes approaching a century at 25 degrees Celsius. Authors of the study wrote, Excellent lifetime at high temperatures is demonstrated with electrolytes that contain lithium bisomide salt, well beyond those provided by conventional lithium iron phosphate electrolytes. Maintaining a temperature temperature of 25 degrees Celsius may be unrealistic in real world conditions, but Teslas do have the best battery thermal management systems currently available on the market. It has long been known that relatively stable temperatures result in a prolonged battery life expectancy. With a 100 year capacity, a battery pack will be functioning long after the vehicle has degraded. In contrast, at 0 degrees Celsius, the performance of the 4680 batteries will decrease by 10 to 20 percent, and at negative 20 degrees Celsius, the performance is only about 60% of the original. It's critical to consider how the new battery will impact the environment. The new design may be able to function with little or no cobalt. This is critical since cobalt mining can result in contaminated water, air, and soil, as well as miners suffering from respiratory and other health issues. With low or no cobalt in the battery's composition, the new battery design would be capable of giving identical results and performing in the same way. While this improves the sustainability and reduces questions over the ethical source sourcing of cobalt, it also offers an insight into the direction of battery development that Tesla researchers are now taking. Tesla has decided to continue working with Don and his team of geniuses until 2026. Here's to a future where electric vehicles are less expensive and more efficient. We can surely see Tesla exceeding range expectations in the future. So what do you think? Excited to see new battery chemistry that can last 100 years? And 
And how do you think this breakthrough will change Tesla's vehicles? Degrees Celsius, the performance of the 4680 batteries will decrease by 10 to 20%, and at negative 20 degrees Celsius, the performance is only about 60% of the original. It's critical to consider how the new battery will impact the environment. The new design may be able to function with little or no cobalt. This is critical since cobalt mining can result in contaminated water, air, and soil, as well as miners suffering from respiratory and other health issues. With low or no cobalt in the battery's composition, the new battery design would be capable of giving identical results and performing in the same way. While this improves sustainability and reduces questions over the ethical source sourcing of cobalt, it also offers an insight into the direction of battery development that Tesla researchers are now taking. Tesla has decided to continue working with Don and his team of geniuses until 2026. Here's to a future where electric vehicles are less expensive and more efficient. We can surely see Tesla exceeding range expectations in the future. So, what do you think? Excited to see new battery chemistry that can last 100 years? And how do you think this breakthrough will change Tesla's vehicles? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Five lithium battery fires for every billion miles traveled, compared to 55 fires per billion miles traveled in gasoline cars. However, it can take up to 24 hours for a battery fire to be fully extinguished. To solve this, LG Chem has developed new breakthrough materials that have the longest flame blocking duration. So why wouldn't anyone want this material? And how effective is it exactly? LG Chem said it had developed a highly heat resistant plastic that can significantly delay thermal runaway in the 4680 batteries used in Tesla's electric vehicles. LG said the new material has the longest flame blocking duration in the world. But what kind of plastic? LG Chem's new flame retardant material is described as a highly functional engineering plastic comprising various material groups, including poly polyphenylene oxide, polyamide, and polybutylene terephthalate. Compared with other flame retardant plastics, the materials can block heat for longer periods of time when it is applied to the electric vehicle's battery pack cover. But then how much does this plastic material from LG Chem cost? According to LG, the cost of the material is only 20% of a Tesla's 4680 battery pack. Tesla charges $7,400 for a Model Y 4680 pack, therefore installing this extra material only costs around $1,500. If you don't want to fire in your car, this expense is insignificant. Now, how exactly does it help? LG Chem said in-house tests showed the material prevented flame propagation for over 400 seconds above 1,000 degrees, 45 times longer than general flame retardant plastics, which would provide more time for the safe evacuation of vehicle occupants in the case of a battery fire. The material is also said to have superb dimensional stability, maintaining its shape despite extreme temperature changes. LG Chem said thermal runaway is a main cause of fire in electric vehicle batteries, which which occurs when battery cells suffer stresses from various sources, causing over-voltage and over-discharge short circuits. Fires start once the cell's internal temperature rises above a certain level. Lithium-ion batteries are also highly reactive to water, meaning that fires are hard to extinguish with water. Last year, several EV fires in the US which caused severe injury were found to have been caused by defective LGES batteries. But speaking of the flame blocking duration, how about the longevity of this material? How many years will it last? This product is expected to last 50 years because it's made of durable materials, unless your car unfortunately catches fire, in which you'll then have to replace the cover. I've gotta say, there's many advantages to having this cover. So when are we going to see this material in the real world? LG Chem intends to begin commercial production next year and work on patent applications for the new material in South Korea, the United States, and Europe is already underway, according to the company. For Tesla, the 4680 batteries are an essential component. How then is manufacturing of the Tesla 4680 battery coming along? Tesla announced this week that the Cato Road Pilot Battery Facility in Fremont, California achieved a new production milestone. According to the company's tweet, the team managed to produce roughly 868,000 4680 type cylindrical lithium ion battery cells during the last week. That's about 124,000 cells produced every day. 
a Twitter user, Alex, has made a production ramp forecast for the 4680 batteries. He expects a run rate of 4 million cells per month in mid-January of 2023. The current run rate is about 3,840,000 per month. Previously, this facility produced a cumulative number of 1,4680 type cells in February since the production started in 2020. We don't know what the current cumulative number is, but the 10 months now, but with 10 months now down the road, it should be more than 10 million units. With current production, how many Model Ys will be produced? We now see that 868,000 battery cells are enough to produce over a thousand Model Y vehicles. Annualized, that's 52,000 cars a year with 4680 batteries. The cells are used to produce one type of Model Y vehicle with a structural battery pack at Gigafactory Texas. Tesla is definitely on an exponential trend, and these 4680 batteries will be used in the Tesla semi the Cybertruck and possibly the Model 3 with LFP batteries, but that remains to be seen. But what are Tesla's competitors doing to ramp up battery production? It's from German luxury car maker BMW, which has shown off its latest electric car technology but the company has all but admitted to copying Tesla's work. So the question has to be asked, can BMW take on Musk? BMW's new battery is known as the Gen 6, and it is a complete departure from any battery design they've used before. The Gen 6 is a large cylindrical battery, 46 millimeters wide and either 95 millimeters or 120 millimeters tall. For comparison, Tesla's cell is slightly smaller at 46 millimeters by 80. So what then is the result of all of this innovation in the BMW battery. Well, BMW can get 30% more range from these packs, allowing them to build EVs with over 620 miles of range. The Tesla Model Y all-wheel drive is equipped with 4680 type batteries, rated at 279 miles of range, which is 341 miles less than the BMW battery. The Gen 6's weight also goes down by up to 30% thanks to the, in to the increased energy density. The new internal chemistry and better cooling allows charge speeds of 270 kilowatts, making 10 to 80% charge times as short as 15 minutes. In contrast, charging a Model Y equipped with the new battery at the latest at the latest V3 supercharger attained a maximum charging power of 250 kilowatts and took 32 minutes to charge from 0 to 80%. It looks like BMW's new battery is making big breakthroughs. Moreover, BMW is bringing in a third-party manufacturer to get production started, which may get these batteries into their cars by 2025. So does this spell out the end of Tesla's EV dominance? Musk has several options. First, he could compile could pile more money onto the 4680 development and ramp production up to scale more quickly. Tesla does have the cash reserves to be able to do this as well. After all, I'm sure BMW wouldn't mind getting a licensing fee for this battery, and Tesla already uses CATL to supply their 2170 batteries. Either way, it seems Tesla has always been ahead. It's taken BMW many years to catch up to Tesla, but now I'm sure they're hoping to stay on par with the electric vehicle giant. Do you think Tesla will apply new technology to the 4680 battery? Will competitors develop a new battery that's even better than the 4680 model? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We thank you so much for watching and for all of your support of our channel. As always, if you enjoyed our video, please leave us a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs and green technology. Once again, we thank you so much, and until the next time, take care and be safe. Oh! and Happy New Year!